Uh, welcome to this episode of UK GK TV. Uh, this is my good friend Dave. And this is my good friend Bill. Yeah, we're here to talk today about uh, what we did in the pre-internet days uh, in terms of modelling, of course, and uh, how we used to keep in touch and how we used to understand what was available in the hobby. So, for instance, if you were in any hobby at all, like football or cycling, anything like that, bodybuilding, uh, model kits, you bought a thing called a magazine. Now, some of you do not remember the time before the internet and the internet is everywhere <laughs> obviously but in the days before the internet keeping in contact was really really quite difficult so what you needed to know is what kits were available and where you could get them from <laughs> so we had a series of magazines that were available for you to do that with and they started off with some quite primitive beginnings uh, and we've got some examples here haven't we uh, we were just looking at and uh, one of them that caught my eye w was this uh, it's called uh, the garage and uh, it's totally black and white and what I, I, I have to say uh, even though it's very primitive I do find myself drawn to it yeah it's if you look at it it's got the kind of the early sort of the, the illustration is very much of the garage kit books by Terry Webb and Dave Fisher yeah and I'm thinking if you go back to the old EC comics like Tales from the Crypt yeah, and uh, creepy worlds and stuff like that. Yeah, that's there's, a there's world. definitely a kind of southern gothic American feel to that. That sort of yeah, drawing, it's got it? a style on it. It's I mean, got I'm a just style. Not, I'm just noting it's got it's, there's got a Fisher there, so I'm yeah, maybe yeah. thinking is it Dave? Dave Fisher possibly, did it? Maybe possibly. we might we could yeah. be wrong. Yeah. You guys can let us know. Uh, this cover, incidentally, would probably be what we call a paste up, and this is something else you probably don't remember. Pre desktop publishing, all of this was done separately by hand, cut out with a scalpel, stuck onto a piece of paper photographed with an analog camera and the photograph was then converted into an offset litho plate which would then be printed uh, which uh, was an expensive process to get the plate made but once you would made the plate you could reel off loads and loads and loads and if you look at this magazine it's basically four plates because it's two a3 sheets folded uh, and that's basically what uh, 16 sides yep yeah or is it eight sides two four six five. but anyway you get it's basically two pieces of A3, and that's what constituted a hobby magazine. Mm. Obviously, it's not one of the most advanced ones, and, and, and with uh, resin kits and garage kits being an underground thing anyway, these do look like an underground magazine. I think if you were into punk rock in the 1970s, lots of fans of the genre would make magazines like this, non-mainstream, yeah. as, like as like counter to mainstream magazines like NME and Sounds and stuff. And this is the kind of model kit, equivalent of a fan magazine or what we i would have called an underground magazine uh so that's that's quite interesting it's black and white obviously because in those days color printing was way too expensive so yeah this is uh this is quite these are quite vintage now aren't they and it and just to clarify it's printed on something that we oh, called yeah. paper paper yeah for your younger viewers yeah bill's going to explain what paper, paper is. <laughs> is a an analog methodology of transferring information without using any digital input, right? And uh, the earliest forms of this go back thousands of years, uh, and it probably culminated in the 1970s with the biro <laughs> and the photocopy paper. There's the biro. So there's the biro, <laughs> there's paper, and you'd probably find, if you went back further than this, you'd probably find handwritten versions yes, of this, you which had just been photocopied at work and, <laughs> and sent by post to people. Uh, obviously, that it did get to a point though where you could actually buy these magazines from the newsagents, uh, and like other gentlemen's publications, <laughs> they would probably be on the top shelf. And I have to say, some of the content in some of the later ones, kind of deservedly so. Uh, but we've got magazines here, like this is called Kit Builders and Glue Sniffers. It later just simply became Kit Builders. I think. When it became a bit more mainstream, I think having a magazine called Kit Builders Blue and Glue Sniffers kind of put the news agents off a little bit because yeah. glue sniffing, as as everybody knows or should know, is not a good thing because it refers to the their 1970s and 80s habit of, glue, of, uh, of sniffing adhesives the and, it, and the fumes off adhesives, which would give you a high. And uh, in the in the trade, so to speak, people that made styrene kits in particular. Their nickname for them was glue sniffers because yeah. they used a lot of glue. I mean, yeah. they didn't actually sniff the glue, but sometimes but you got high lot. by accident. I remember being in my warm bedroom in the winter and being a bit overcome by the fumes of a, a tube of Brit Fix. So I'm guessing, right? Bill, they've dropped the kit 
this glue sniffers yeah. to get this more onto the shelf. Yeah, and you can see it's become more mainstream. I mean, I'm still this is still worth a kind of if you ever get a copy of this, it's worth a flick through because you can see some of this was done on a typewriter. Yeah. Uh, and once again, it's got the paste up, and once again, it's totally black and white. But any issue at all, you can basically flick through, and you can see, you can see a kit that you you either craved or fancied at the time. Yeah. I mean, there's the, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's still a lot of Star Trek stuff in here as well. Wow. And some and some Aurora repops. There's like a Godzilla dragster down there, which caught my eye. Oh, there you go. There's a Klingon bird of prey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and none of these were really kind. Of, some of these were, were were sort of mainstream from places people like AMT and Ertel. Yeah. But most of these were actually still garage. The garage kits. Right? Garage kits. That was yeah. the like. That was the that was the magazine at the time. Uh, now this magazine is no longer in publication. Um, it went out of publication a few years ago. Uh, but a friend of mine has actually bought the the company, bought the rights, bought everything to do this. So I'm kind of open. That this comes back uh, currently like we say this yeah. isn't available guys so don't go looking no for point. it because <laughs> it's not available you will find back issues uh, not sure how much you'll pay but you will find back issues but it was it was your Bible in the day yeah. um, over in the United States uh, uh, somebody, somebody once gave a quote to me they said nothing is better at being a shark than a shark and yeah. I think nothing's better at being a magazine no, than a paper magazine a properly published magazine because i don't care what people say you can have it on an ipad you can get it up on a screen but sitting there leafing through these pages smelling the ink nice isn't it? it's it's just a beautiful experience and you know if we can be bothered look at that, sure, look at that picture oh, there yeah, look, look at this yeah. i mean the photography yeah, the photography that. in this was stunning the layout yeah, in layout in yeah. afm was just amazing this is this is amazing figure model isn't it this, this is, is this, this is a one no no, well, amazing. Well, this is the most no. up-to-date one we're going to be looking at, isn't it? Yeah, it is in production, but this will take us on to the next thing and the, the next t topic we're going to talk about. This is like your Rolls Royce of the, of the magazines. Yeah. This is the one that you look at. This is what you aspire to. Yeah. This recently, last two, three, four maybe uh, episodes or uh, issues went to digital. Right. So it's it's online. Yeah. So it's basically. A bit like Yes, it's, it's not it, what it was. <laughs> no, it the vino. Yeah, we all had that when we were yeah, kids, yeah. didn't we? Uh, it's now it's no longer available in this format, right. so you will have okay. to buy it digitally. I'm not sure about that. I'm I mean, not sure. I think what I liked about this at the time was most newspapers and a lot of magazines in print were still in black and white. Yeah. But when this first came out, what was amazing about it, it was it was near enough full colour. Every other page was a bright colour page, wasn't it? It, it I just think that it, really stood out. It's yeah. like a stained glass window in a in, yeah. a, in a in a cathedral. Yeah, I mean whoever yeah. designed this did yeah. it right because everything about it made you want to buy model kits. Yeah, and, and even down to the kind of like late eighties kind of airbrushed kind yeah. of feel to the Yeah, I mean the guy yeah, it just it's just it really nice lovely, to look yeah, at. Yeah. I mean, I used to get these and they used to be four, five, six man six uh kits in there for you know and i was i had to have them so this yeah, was a fantastic tool. what we also see is is people who are well known in the hobby becoming almost like a kind of a rock star status jeff yeager yeah, like jeff yeager uh, yeah. john denner sean neagle and yeah. all the rest of it yeah and their names appear on the cover and this shows in a way that there's a does it becomes a little bit not quite establishment, but becoming more establishment when you get figures yeah. by artists that you're actually looking for? Because I always used to think, well, what's Jeff Yeager doing? Well, funny little yeah, shout yeah. out here: the magazine right. you've picked up purely yeah. by accident, I might add. Michael. My, uh, right. Michael Scott. Best of there. British. Ah, best of British. One of the best. Yeah, Mike. and that, of course, that's if anybody doesn't recognise it, you've Curse never the seen the movie. It's Curse the Well with Oliver Reed. Which is which is kind of weird, really, because you've got Jeff Yeager. And then you've got Mike Hill, which, right. which isn't, yeah. isn't a bad it's, thing. No, no, it's a good thing. But, you know, uh, I, I, it's good. That, and the reason I, I particularly like this this image as well is because for a Hammer movie, that the, the makeup on Hammer was, was always minimised to save costs. But Oliver Reed kind of looked like a werewolf anyway. But mm. the fact is, it's very light makeup for Oliver Reed. And it goes kind of back to Werewolf of London from the 1970s. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It? And you can actually see there. So that's not only is that a good werewolf it's a good likeness of to oliver, oliver reed. reed that's probably yeah. one of the best oliver reeds it's, it's very good isn't it the, the, uh, i've got to be honest mike mike was a massive fan yeah and, yeah. I, and I was quite good quite close to mike and he's one of the best i'm telling you but he was fanatical about this so 
that had to be right. If it wasn't right, Mike wasn't letting that yeah. go out. And I think he absolutely nailed it. He yeah, because it actually looks like a movie still. Yes, very But if good. you look very carefully at it, it's a three-dimensional object, and you can see from the lighting yeah. around the edges that it is, in fact, a sculpture. That's and, it's not... still, and it still sells. To and, it's still, and it's still in production? Yeah, it still sells well, to this There day. it goes to share. Now, the, the, the thing uh, that that, uh, that perhaps brings us on to the, to the kind of theme, maybe, of the, of the next video as such is... Uh, some of the content. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Ready? This is this is this is not Sports Illustrated. This is <laughs> this is amazing figure model, modeler, the swimsuit edition. Now, in a modern world of uh, equality and stuff, uh, I have to ask myself: is as as much as I didn't notice it at the time, but what I've noticed over the years, being involved in education and meeting a lot of females in the hobby. I often think that magazines like this or presentations like this can maybe kind of put female members of the hobby off a little bit at the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when this publication came out, when this particular issue came out, mm -hmm. uh, it was a very well-supported genre in, in the States and, well, over here and in the United States of America. Yeah. So it has got its own following. Um, it does tend to give that sort of vibe that it's a male dominated uh, hobby, hobby which it is and i think we do need to encourage uh, females because yeah. the fantastic painters i mean rachel and uh, kate that have that come to the workshop yeah. amazing probably better than us to be honest but it it doesn't help it doesn't help no, it doesn't help i mean i'm not i'm, I'm not by it in any way being the morality police here no because that's I can't be doing that. I, I, my own morality is questionable, so why would I question anybody else's? But I'm just thinking, you know, when I look through this, I'd have probably found this quite titillating at the time, <laughs> I have to say, thinking, oh, that's nice, you know, it's the lady there in a, in a rubber cat suit. Personally, it's not my kind of thing. No, it's not uh, mine. Because dinosaurs... Well, they don't wear clothes anyway, do they, mate? Like, no. They're slow. Back, to, back to dinos. Back to dinosaurs. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, there's, I mean, but you've got perfectly great kits like this, for instance. Which is Red Sonja, which is a Marvel character from the nineteen seventies. It was a Bridget Nielsen movie, and yeah. that's one of the original drawings. There, a nice bit of painting there, and you can see the kit is based on one of the original drawings, and that's perfectly valid as far as I'm concerned, because that that's an image that you would see in the comic book. Mm. Uh, Howard Chaykin, who's a very famous uh, artist, de developed and designed the character years back, and that's got a real feel of the original. I, I, I think it's so, well supported yeah. and the, uh, the female genre is well supported, well supported. Yeah. yeah I mean recent recent Wonderfest yeah. uh, there's a company that does female kits just female kits, just female but, kits. You, but they do their sort of own take on it so they'll do a creature from the Black Lagoon they'll yeah. do like a Frankenstein they'll do things like that but they'll do them in female form well, yeah. and so I believe they sell right. out by 11 o'clock so it's yeah, well yeah. supported. And I mean, I think it's almost like a sub-genre within the genre, isn't yeah, it? You've yeah, got, you've got, you've you've got your females, your universal, your dinosaurs. See, my, my, my thing comes here. This is me being with my scientific head on. Creature from the Black Lagoon is a reptile. <laughs> therefore, would not have breasts. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Right, okay. Yeah. Just saying there, mate. I have to say that. Because yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the Creature from the Black Lagoon is my favourite horror creature. Because basically, he's like a dinosaur man, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but anyway, that's me. He is. Yeah, so, but it's well yeah. supported. It's so well the magazines supported. have come a long way on. Uh, yeah. And I just don't know about this this online stuff. I understand it cuts costs down. Yeah, it does. Um, I don't think I've ever got an issue of it online, which is really sad because I used to really look mm. forward to getting this. Yeah. I'd pay double what these guys were thinking yeah. but probably that's just I mean me. if you buy a magazine sort of like GQ magazine or a, a Homestar magazine you're paying six or seven quid yeah. so you're paying that, that for something you're going to throw away mm. which most people do they read it good yeah. housekeeping they read it yeah. they bug yeah. it in the bin it gets recycled yeah. but this kind of stuff you're paying, you'd probably be you'd still probably be paying a reasonable amount of money for seven, it eight, seven, seven eight seven eight quid pound. and yeah. you would be collecting it and you'd be keeping it for reference as well Definitely. and I think Rachel was saying about Paul Fay. It got hundreds of it, hundreds of horror magazines like Fangora and stuff like that, classic monsters. Because back in the day when he was sculpting, there was no internet to get reference material from. So the magazine was essential to the modeler for reference, wasn't it? Especially yeah. color magazines like Fangora, because yeah. if you were painting the Frankenstein, uh, you know the original body's Carl Frankenstein. Apparently, even though we see it in black and white, was a kind of shade of green, wasn't he? 
Private leader. The makeup was a shade of green for the black and white film. So, you know, we get that little bit of history as well with the magazine that you perhaps wouldn't get with an online publication. Because an online publication, if you want a picture of Oliver Reed as, you know, in Curse of the Werewolf, you just type Curse of the Werewolf and up come hundreds of pictures. That's it. Whereas back in the day, you needed the magazine the ma- the as a reference point. So the Fangora yeah. or Classic Monsters or House of Hammer or House of Horror, as it later be called. That's it. I used to love that. Especially the uh, a Million Years BC issue with the dinosaurs in it, mate. <laughs> That's not dinosaurs again. <laughs> I'm going to ask you yeah. guys a question. Right. Over in the UK, for, yeah. the U- for the UK guys, only this, because I don't think it was available in the United States. Who remembers this? Do you remember that, Bill? I remember that, Mod Mart. That's yeah. the one. Model and Collector's That's the Mart. One. That's the one that got me... Every couple of weeks, I used to go yeah. to Smith's. I had to read this yeah. to buy it. Uh, but that had everything in, didn't it? It had tanks, it had planes, it had figures. It yeah. was it was a it was a multi-purpose magazine. It had trucks, which were dead popular at the time, if you remember. Yeah. AMT and t- um, yeah, Ethics this, got together, didn't this they? This was the one, stuff. because this is all we had. This yeah, is this the only is, thing we had. The, yeah. We didn't have all these fancy magazines yeah. in the UK. We had this. This this was what I call a Commonwealth magazine. Yeah. This was Australia, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and the UK yeah, yeah. so you'd often see for instance it's got an actual Canadian dollar sign on the cover as well as the £1.90 which it was which you think £1. about £1.90 £1.90 and that was 1996 Six, you, you did yeah. the maths guys you did the maths it's too early in but the day but to be fair everything you could get was in those pages yeah it and, was all in here and you know you could get on a train and go and visit one of these places or you could order it as yeah. I was saying to Dave I was I, I, the only time I ordered anything from America was uh, two companies Chiller Theatre in New York which was the, the first one I ever bought uh, from a foreign land and the original Dark Horse which was in Milwaukee I actually sent away for those stuff back in the 90s and it took them about two months to arrive and when they did arrive I had to pay extra on them to get them out of the post office because they hadn't paid the duty on it and it was a real pain in the neck whereas that magazine most of the stuff in there was UK availability so you got it pretty much within within a week there you go classic advert one of the founder members mm-hmm. of the UK garage kit scene fifth cent Stevie Chan from Northern Ireland all Michael and Alan Irons and classics. Still, I mean, put, cut, that's a Highlander there. Yeah, that's uh, Michael, Michael, yep. uh, Alan Irons and Jonathan Zuer. Uh, it Ma- is too. Yeah, all, Brilliant. all that was the beginning of the, the revolution in the UK. Mm. Stevie Chan, uh, Fifth Sense. Watch that film the other day. Made no sense whatsoever. There could only be one. Could only be the one. There could only be one. one. There could only be one. <laughs> there could only be one. So this is this this thing. This magazine cost me a fortune. It yeah. only cost me one pound seventy five, but the money I spent reading this. Conversely, though, if you w- did have a product to sell, the that likelihood is if you put it in there, you would actually get some sales. Because met- you had to remember, people had to sell. If you were making kits, you had to sell them. Yeah. yeah. I basically met two of my uh, sculpting guys who used Paul Faye and Neil Avi through this through magazine the because they put adverts in, mm-hmm. and I contacted them and said, Neil, Paul, would you fancy it? And they that later on we'll tell you about that later but that's where i'm at I'm so it's very very important for killer kits and very important for the uk yeah. mm-hmm. which leads us on to um the next thing i'm going to talk about here we go this is our publication yeah now this is a fan produced thing this is produced by myself yeah. uh guys like bill and other people come to contribute to it so i'm not a graphic artist so me getting it me getting this to this is a big ask but we use that as a yard yardstick this comes yeah. out once a year uh it's not just concentrating on uk gk it's concentrating on america as well but we're, ca- we're doing it from a brit guy or brit people and we try to get it as close as we can we're nowhere near that standard because we're not graphic artists but that's the first that, that's that's our issue and we've evolved now to that was I think that was last year's. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I kind of like this. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, so we've yeah, basically yeah. we've basically moved on from that to that with the show, etc. Uh, we've kept it. We, we've taken the best parts out of it. It's color, all color. I think with this, it's got a good balance of text and illustrations. It doesn't get too wordy, and the pictures are really crisp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do yeah. make mistakes. You know, I mean, obviously, I can send these to the printers and I give them the wrong file. 
bear with us guys mm. this is just this is just a labor of love i know i don't make any money out of this i'll probably lose money you I can don't. buy a copy at uh, the uk gk show yeah please. this will be available yeah. at the uk gk show later next month full yeah. enough so this do, and they will be limited back issues uh available as well but it's it's wrote by a guy that's it's not i'm not a graphic designer i'm just trying to help guys and the guys came to me in the uk and said can we feature the uk a little bit so we've gone from this one to this one that one the hardest part about this is getting the guys to send me the information about what's available you know there's this there's what's you know there's how to have uh articles in it uh, bill does a couple of articles about it very very well there's, you know there's adverts in it and stuff but and we also do across the pond which we flip it and do the american side i think so hopefully this will continue i think we're on issue six now that's so we're done really? okay six, six years six, six years. years we've been doing six it years. okay <laughs> uh, my yeah. my favorite cover probably is uh whoa, 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 that one there's my favorite i don't know why i just like the image i just think that image is just really nice that's good. Yeah, it's nice i think that's issue yeah. two yeah. so you know and this, we, we're trying we do there's okay some american stuff and we try and keep it a little bit uh a little bit sort of like you say time there's there's a sort of tip across the uk gk show yeah. etc so we try and keep it that way so yeah. that's what's out there um I'm not. We are working towards the best we can. Whether we'll, we go digital, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it'd be a shame if we couldn't carry on with a with a with an analog print. Isn't yeah, it? I it'd think be so. Nice to keep a piece I of think paper. so. I mean, it yeah. just feels nice, doesn't it? it? Just it's just nice to. Nice. I know I've got all, I've got them all. Have you? It's nicely stacked. Have you? <laughs> yeah, got so you've got all. collectors yeah, items. All the other stuff goes in the bin, mate. But that you've and got... anything with a dinosaur ring goes on the shelf. You got collectibles, <laughs> haven't you? So uh, have you got, are we going to talk about what's else is featured in? Yeah, the, what we're going to so, do next is yeah. Bill's going to have a look at diversity in the hobby, and he's going to be chatting to a couple of our female painters, collectors, etc. Shortly. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you for all the positive uh, messages and emails. We will add a section in where we'll answer the emails for you. We'll do our best. Uh, try and keep them clean, guys. Uh, if, if you like the video, smash a like and hit the notification yeah. bell. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We're really enjoying doing it. It's nice to chat to Bill on a Sunday after his croissant. He's got himself in a bit of a. He's got himself in a routine a now. Was. He's the croissant guy now. Yeah, so. I do me shopping in 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 a, in a popular supermarket, which is ridiculously expensive, which I can't afford to do me shopping in. But I often go sit there in the canteen that they call the restaurant, and I have a, a croissant and a cup of coffee as a reward for my endeavours during the week, mate. How the other half live, eh? How the other half live, the other half live indeed. <laughs> On to the next segment. Thanks, okay. guys. Bye, see ya. Here with a quick review uh, of this beautiful sculpture here it's called venus and it's by a sculptor called joe bailey joe bailey has been in the hobby for absolutely years he's kind of one of the godfathers of the hobby he got in touch with uh, uh, us a couple of weeks back and dropped off a few kits already painted they're painted by matt walford these are examples of them now this is the one that took my eye it's called venus it's not of any particular actress in any particular film. What it is, is it's kind of a pastiche of all those kind of 1950s B-movie science fiction things. And it's an absolute lovely piece of work. When you see this, it's hard to believe it, but it is cast in one mould. It is cast as a single piece. And that's pretty impressive because that figure looks like it's clinging onto that backboard. There's no indication that this is a single piece at all. It looks like separate parts. Absolutely lovely surface textures there. It's painted by a guy called Matt Walford, who uh, is often associated with Joe, who paints a lot of his kits. And if you look at that, you can see the textures on it. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to look a bit closer there. 
you know basically what's happened is, is is joe was taken all the kind of cliches that you think about 1950s and 60s science fiction movies and put them together in this which is a very striking figure of a lady in a silver bikini uh kind of barbarella kind of forbidden planet all of those things in one and as i was saying it's an absolutely beautiful sculpt uh obviously resin and you can hang it on the wall there you go there's joe singer from the back and you can just hang it on the wall just like you would a commemorative plate. I think this is much nicer than a commemorative plate. One of the things that really interests me about it as well is there's absolute attention to detail. And even in the rock formations in the background, there's absolutely hundreds and hundreds of marks. Every single part of the plaque, there's not one part of it that doesn't have something in there for you to paint. So even the blue, dark blue sky in the background with the flying saucers, there's a fantastic texture to it. So it really does it really does the business because when you're painting something that's, that's kind of flat and featureless, it's very hard to get the paint right if the paint doesn't dry properly. But with you having lots of features on the background, it means you can go to town with your brush. And uh, like I said, uh, Matt Walford painted this and a fantastic job he does. Yeah, well worth it. Absolutely. So let me, uh, if I can tilt that round there, you can see the way the, the leg of the figure is coming out. And if you look very carefully at the bottom, you can see that little cute robot there. It's kind of uh, cross between uh, R2-D2 and the thing out the Forbidden Plan, Robbie the Robot there. So what I'm going to say about this is absolutely delightful. So if you're looking for something a little bit more generic and as something that doesn't attach to... Because you know, obviously when you're making a kit or you're painting the figure from a movie, you're kind of restricted to what you're doing. The beauty of this is that you can go to town on this. Personally, red paint... For me, I don't know, maybe that's a thing going on there. Maybe it's a Freudian thing. I, for me, that would be red painted. But, uh, you know, all seriousness, she could be a brunette, she could be a blonde, it's up to you. So I will recommend this. I think it's a beautiful piece of sculpture. Fantastic proportions of the figure itself. Very, very indicative of the 1950s. Give it a go if you're looking for something different.